one man helping to save some troubled homeowners by reducing what they owe. But first, dozens of people saving lives by donating their kidneys to strangers. Guys, you are going to love this story. We will meet some people involved in a record-setting effort. It's called a kidney chain. I met the woman who got the kidney. I know. It's a, and her husband yeah. donated, but not to her. I know. That's what's thing. so interesting. In the next room, they were setting the record for dogs. Imagine someone you love would die without a kidney transplant. You want to give them one of yours, but you're not a match for, say, your spouse. To the rescue, though, comes a kidney that is a match from a stranger whose loved one is in the same boat as you are. Does that make sense to you? The scenario, it's called a chain. A chain of 60 surgeries, 30 kidneys donated to 30 unrelated recipients. It happened in December, and it involved hospitals and patients all over the country. 17 hospitals, 11 states. It was the world's largest kidney transplant chain. 16 of the 60 patients involved had their surgery performed right here in Southern California, UCLA Ronald Reagan, or Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. And so joining me now, and these are just great people to have with us, from UCLA Medical Center, transplant surgeon Dr. Jeffrey Veal. Also here is Bertha Villa and her husband, oh, she, by the way, got her kidney from a donor in Toronto, and her husband, Rigo Villa, who donated to a patient in Pennsylvania. Welcome to all of you. I think this is fascinating. I think the easiest way to describe this to everybody is it's a medical transplant, pay it forward. So Bertha, you were on dialysis and then something went wrong that meant you needed a transplant, right? Right, well I had been on the transplant list for seven years. Oh my gosh. So, you know, it was, it was, it was a long wait. It was, you know, getting, you know, feeling sick, feeling, you know, bad all the time. And then you got an infection. And then I had an infection. So. And then Rigo says, I want to do something. I want to trans. I want to give my kidney to someone. Rigo, how did you hear about this idea of the chain? And if you gave your kidney to someone else, it would help uh, Bertha. It was a social worker from uh, UCLA, Suzanne. She told us about the trans um, switch, a okay. swap through, you know. Because he initially wanted to, trans you know, give me the kidney, but we were not a match. We weren't a match. So you didn't want him to do it, though. I felt a sense of guilt. Really? You know, so I just felt like I was taking something that he needed away. And so once I explained, though, the, you know, the process, and I knew he was, you know, he really wanted to do this then. All right, Dr. Jeff Dr. Jeffrey Veal, how does Rigo giving a kidney to someone else, and in that case, moving it all down the chain, help Bertha? Because normally when you talk about organ transplants, they're very, very stingy about that. They're very careful about, you know, your first in line, second in line, third in line. Right. Now that's uh, more for the deceased donors on the list. Mm. And uh, Bertha was on the waiting list for seven years waiting for a deceased donor kidney. But I think you explained it pretty well. I mean, Rigo wanted to donate a kidney to Bertha. Bertha didn't match Rigo or was incompatible with Rigo. Mm -hmm. So if he, she would have got Rigo's kidney, she would have rejected it. So what happened is that a stranger gave birth of the kidney and then Rigo goes, hey, my wife just received a kidney. I want to pay it forward or pass on the generosity. So Rigo gives his kidney to someone in Pittsburgh. Whose idea was this? Uh, it's a guy by the name of Michael Reese in the University of Toledo. Toledo. And um, he because came up with the Because aren't you idea. surgeons pretty stingy with your organs? I mean, you like to keep them at UCLA if you can, right? Yeah, but we've tried to get people we think it's more important for the you know the good of uh, get people off the waiting list so we often ship our kidneys to San Francisco San Diego whatever because eventually the chain comes back around and Bertha and Rigo were early on in the chain but then we had three other patients that were at the end of the chain so if you pass it on eventually the chain keeps propagating and comes back your way amazing so. and what would you two say to others who are in need of kidneys or organ transplants where a chain would work I think it's an amazing concept and you know we we really would like people to look into it and learn educate themselves especially in a lot of the like Latino community mm. you know other communities that really are not aware of the situation maybe you can be a so part of that so I, I think I will think about you're that. certainly healthy looking enough right. now to just to, to go out and be the spokesperson it's great so, it's great to see you uh, both thank you thank and you, you look terrific looks like you did a good job I try. All right, yeah. Dr. Jeffrey Veal, Bertha, and Rigo Villa, thank you right. very much thank for you. being thank here. Thank you for having us. Coming up next.